Hi, I'm Sasha, and I am a everyday wig wearer. So I've been looking at YouTube, and I was finding lots of really helpful tips when I was first wearing a wig. And I thought that I would kind of compile some of those really great tips for you in one video for beginner wig wearers. And maybe point out a few things that I saw that were maybe, you know, not quite right or not recommended because, you know, they wouldn't be recommended to you by a professional wig um, seller. <laughs> and But they really do work for us everyday wig wearers. And a few, you know, my pet peeves that I've seen, you know, beginning wig wearers doing that I would really like to help you out on. You know, I'm not going to point it out to you on the street, but I'm going to put it in this video because it can really help your wig look more natural and uh, just give you a better overall wig wearing experience that you wouldn't have, you know, when you haven't learned the ins and outs of wearing a wig. So, I think uh, the best place to start is how to put on a wig. There are a couple different ways, and it's different for different wigs. Some are tighter, some are looser. Longer wigs you want to put on a different way than you would put on a shorter wig. So I'll start out by just showing you how I put mine on. So, I have a bio hair, as you would call. It's very thin, and there's not much you can uh, do with it, other than put a wig on it. <laughs> so anyways, it's uh, very thin cotton candy hair. It's very lackluster. Most of the uh, reasons other people wear wigs, I mean, it looks like, oh yeah, you got a good head of hair up here, but once it comes down to here, it's nothing but just kind of weirdness. Okay, so somebody with a thicker uh, head of hair is trying to wear wigs. I don't know why you'd want to, but anyways, <laughs> besides a nice style change, maybe a color change, um, I would suggest braiding your hair. You, if you have really thick hair, doing two braids and kind of foiling it up onto your head, um, that's a great option. But for those of us who are just wearing a wig because you have super pathetic thin <laughs> hair or uh, whatnot, the uh, best option I found. And I have similar hair to most people who are wearing the wig for hair loss. I just simply take that little bit of, I mean, look at this is what I would have for a ponytail. <laughs> Anyways, I take that little bit of, bit of a locks and I kind of twist it into kind of a little loop here. And I'm doing this completely blind. I just take some regular old snappy clips and I do a little uh, what not to the back of my hair. Anyways, whatever you can get to do to stay up there. Um, normally, depending on what kind of wig I'm wearing, I would part my hair to match the wig, but most of my wigs uh, don't really matter too much. I don't pull out any of my natural hair for the most part because they don't match my wigs. <laughs> so, like I just showed you, these are my favorite wig caps. They're the mesh. They're very easy to put on. They're open at the top. I can show you a couple of ways to put these on. You can either up, drag them all the way down around your neck. This is the best way to get a really smooth look. Not to be done with earrings on, obviously. Anyways, that's one way. Or just plain putting it on like I did before. So, that's the easy part. <clears throat> there are other types of wig caps, just plain nylon. They look like this kind of like a nylon stocking. They're very hot, by the way. I recognize, uh, recommend the mesh because they're so much cooler. Now, a long wig, hence is this. Best way to put this on, because if you're going to tip it, your head in the forwards way, you're really going to mess up a long do. 
is putting the back in first and pulling it up over the front of your head. That was with your hands in it, stretching it out. So grab your ear tabs. Now the ear tabs are these. They're on most wigs. They're where on a wig? Right here. Those show you exactly where they're supposed to be on your head. The hairline of the wig should be right on your hairline. The other way to put on a wig, touching that hairline to yours, pushing your head into the wig. Like so. Those are the two ways that I know to put a wig on. Line up the hairline to your hairline, pulling the ear tabs directly over each of your ears. This is also a good way to find out if a wig is a good uh, fit for you. If a wig cap's a little small, these tabs are not going to sit well right on top of your ears. These ear tabs should sit right about where your own, where your own hairline is right here. That's where an ear tab should sit if the wig fits you perfectly, in my opinion. Some people don't care where those ear tabs end up. They could be up here, they could be down here. As long as they're pulled evenly on both sides of your head, you probably get away with wearing them in different places. If you're wearing way too small of a cap, it'll probably just ride up right off of your head. If you're wearing too big of a cap, it'll be hanging all over in bad places. So, hmm. and I think it's really great other people showing their wigs on them because even though there's just review after review of some of the same wigs, I watch them all when I'm purchasing a wig because I like to see how it looks on different people's faces, different face shapes, different height. Um, a wig can look just so different when it's on a different person and different face shape. So I find that if I watch several videos of a wig on several different people, I'll get a really good idea of how that wig might look on me. And uh, so here we go. I'm going to show you two of my, uh, my go-to Noriko wigs. Um, both of them are in Champagne R. That is the color. It is a very light champagne color with the R standing for root. And as you can see, it's a kind of a dark brown. It's got a little red in it, but that is my favorite color because I am a total blonde wearing kind of person. And so the lighter the blonde, the better. But as far as wigs go, the more ultra blonde you go, the less realistic they look in my opinion. And they get a little too shiny, a little too blonde up here. And people start to look like, wow, that's really blonde. That doesn't look so real. But when you got a rooted blonde, it's kind of like, you know, you give that person a little bit of a leeway because you think, you know, looks pretty real, right? I wouldn't really question that. So, anyways, this wig that I'm wearing right now is my absolute favorite, the, probably the wig that gets the most wear. And as this one is right now, it's not brand new out of the box, but I've been wearing this one for probably two weeks now with no washes. Um, from new. This is the Angelica by Noriko. Very popular wig. You will see lots of reviews for this wig um, on YouTube. And strangest thing, it looks really different on other people. And I can give you some tips about this wig um, and how I styled this wig. Um, this is a machine um, made wig. It doesn't have any lace front. It doesn't have a monotop or a skin part. It uh, is a very basic wig cap. Um, it's a very popular wig. Um, it's a very affordable wig. It's one of Noriko's more affordable long wigs. And it's one of Noriko's longest wigs. Probably the longest one that they have um, on its current market right now. Um, the thing about Noriko's wigs that some people really don't appreciate, but I am right on the bandwagon with, is the uh, permatease, and that's this little kind of nappy hairs that are underneath the long hair of their wigs that really gives a full um, volumized look to their wigs. Some people, it looks really bad 
add on. And some people, it just gives just the right amount of height. And for me, somebody who's had thin hair all their life and has a really little head, the um, Permatease just gives all kinds of body and perfect shape to my head that I've never had before. So I really like the Permatease. Um, you can settle down the Permatease a little bit, um, either by uh, using the dreaded <laughs> blow dryer that you're not supposed to use so much on synthetics, but I find is very handy on my synthetics. I would never be able to wear a synthetic wig without my blow dryer because you have to, there's a lot of styling involved that needs to be uh, worked with to make a wig look just right, and the only thing that you're going to get a synthetic wig to sit just how you want it to stay is um, not with a hairspray like you would with a regular wig. You're going to have to set it a little bit with a little bit of heat. So this wig really hung in my face when I first got it. I had to pull it back. And set, set some of the uh, hair where I want it. Remember, low, low heat setting. Synthetic wigs are nothing to use a heated thing. Do not use a hair flattener on your hair flattener, a hair iron on your on your synthetic hair unless it's like super low, like 150 and below. Um, and even then, I wouldn't suggest it because when you're buying a synthetic wig, what you're uh, getting is a style that is baked into a plastic. Uh, fiber. So this whole look that Angelica has has been baked into this hair. When you're using a flat iron or a blow dryer or any kind of other heat uh, styling tool, you are essentially rebaking that hair um, into you know whatever it is you're doing to it. So if you're like trying to get your bangs to stay out of your face, make sure you got all the rest of the hair doing exactly what you want it to do before doing this. Because whatever it is you're holding is going to stay like that. Um, some people suggest when they're styling hair, oh, spray it with water or whatnot. Okay, well, as soon as your water dries, your synthetic hair is basically just going to go back to doing whatever it was it was doing. Hence, the blow dryer. No professional wig seller will recommend this because you can really do some damage to your wig, but for us everyday wig wearers who are styling a wig, this is what we use. Um, I'll tell you, one of my favorite wigs is the Bobby by Envy, and this wig is just one of the ugliest things you will ever see when you first put it on out of the box because the bangs just hang there like some ugly, you know, 1970s boys do. And I really did not like it until I blue dried the bangs to where I wanted them. Um, now back to the uh, Noriko. Uh, the Permatees is great. You can settle it down a little bit again with your blow dryer, really compressing it and putting a little heat onto it. You can get some of this hair to kind of conform. And what you're doing at the same time is um, a new wig is always going to fit you differently than it's going to fit you a week after wearing it because your um, the heat and the oils in your head and just wearing the wig cap is going to uh, that wig cap is going to conform to your own skull and so it's going to relax it's going to the the whole look of the wig is going to fit you completely different than it did the first day you pulled it out of the box and put it on your head so I would really keep that in mind especially when wearing wigs like the Noriko wigs um, because uh, their wigs are so kind of uh, full to begin with, so much hair, and the caps are so basic. Um, as you can see, you know, no monotop, no lace front. They don't have a lot of uh, movement or stretch to them, so really wearing it is what's going to give you the most, um, the most give. To give you an idea, I'll step back a little bit. It's a very long wig, as you can see. I don't know how well I brushed it, but 
it's a long one. And um, it's a wavy because there's no um, lace front or mono top. You want to keep the bangs of this wig kind of covering up your hairline. Very beautiful wig, very popular. Looks good on a lot of people. If you can pull off a long haired wig, this is pretty much the way to go as far as a uh, higher end long synthetic wigs go. Um, because this wig looks good on so many people, it's probably why it's so popular. Um, I have seen it on some people that it doesn't look good on, and it has a lot to do with the permatease that's in it. Um, it has those little nappy fibers underneath the, underneath the long hair that give it a lot of body in the back. And uh, every Noriko wig that I've had so far has had that uh, permatease. Um, if you come to find that you don't like Permatease, Noriko may not be the brand for you. They have some other lines um, under Noriko that do not have the Permatease, but uh, Noriko's uh, Renee of Paris line is full of uh, Permatease, I found. So, anyways, this is my favorite wig. I wear it a lot. Um, this particular one I've had out of the box um, for two weeks now, maybe three weeks, and worn it quite a bit. So it has conformed to my skull, it's really relaxed, and it's not quite as shiny as it was when I first got it, so it's looking probably at its best right now. When I first got it, it was a lot you know, more shiny and wavy, the hair was like super smooth, I didn't have to comb it as much, but I'm, I'm really thinking it's looking more natural now that I've been wearing it and almost every wig um, that you've worn repeatedly for about a week is going to have, it's going to fit you better in the head, feel more comfortable, feel more secure, and uh, you're not going to have as many issues with it. Like this wig, when I first got it, I was having to pin it. And you do that with bobby pins. And because I was pinning this because sometimes you just want to feel like your wig's really on your head, and then sometimes the other issue is it's a really long, heavy wig, so it feels like it's being drawn off of your head. You will lift it up, find a good place where it's really touching your hairline. So that's where I want it. Slide one bobby pin up into your hair and then over the top of the wig, hidden. Then another, like so. And I'm doing this just above the ear tab, and I'm going to do that on both sides. That'll make this wig basically not go anywhere. Alright, like so. So anyways, shake. I feel really great about how the wig feels right now. It is not going to come off my head for anything. I could jump up and down, do a cartwheel. That's how good this feels. That's how I pin a wig on. I've seen people put bobby pins into their wig, down into the cap, and literally try finding those later. I'm telling you, it's no fun. It's like an Easter egg hunt. So that is my favorite way to pin a wig. And I'll tell you another trick that uh, most people I see that I can tell are beginner wig wearers. Um, I notice a lot of girls and even guys, I've seen you on YouTube doing this. Um, you get a new wig and the bangs do this to you. And so what you want to do, or what you're inclined to do, is you go out in public with your bangs pinned up like this with a bobby pin. This is a dead, dead giveaway that you were wearing a wig. Every time I see somebody with a bobby pin bang like this, I think, wow, wig, okay. I wish I could say it to you, but I'm not going to because I'm not going to be that person. But don't bobby pin your bangs back. One of my favorite all-time wigs is the Bobby by Envy. And uh, this is probably 
a good tie with my Angelica pick. But the Bobby has some ugly bangs when you get it out of the box. Just ugly. And um, what you do is again the blow dryer very carefully. Low heat setting. You can also get it a little wet first, that also helps. Spray with a little bit of water or a little bit of your uh, wig conditioner uh, or lusterizer, they call it. And be very careful. Keep your hand on the wig while you're doing it because you can really feel how hot the fibers are getting as you're doing this. Look at how much my bangs are sticking out. Okay, so. Ruin my way of doing this. Um, okay, so I showed you pinning. Another thing that I noticed that I was getting when I was doing that, even though you can really improve your bangs by doing this, you might have a few stray hairs that still hang down and get in your way. They're just it's just always there. Those ones that never conform and or do what you want them to do. When you're first styling your wig, just cut them off right at the, just, you know, those one or two hairs. Not a big chunk, just those one or two little, these, these problem hairs. Cut them right at the root. Get them out of the way. This isn't your real hair. You don't have to worry about them growing out, sticking straight out in front. This is a wig. You cut them off, they're gone. That goes for those stray little hairs that stick up on your hairline. Get rid of them. Um, on the Noriko wigs that have the permities and no part whatsoever, you want to be really careful not to do a really severe part. Do a little bit of a, you know, combing here and there. Make it look a little messy because that way you're going to get a little real realistic looking part going there. The real unperfect look. That is what lends itself to looking more realistic. So, like I said, the Angelica, my absolute favorite Noriko wig. Um, there's another wig that's similarly long, the Shiloh. I haven't gotten her yet, but I will probably review her at some point. I'm going to go to a shorter wig that is easier to wear. This is my like throw on for the grocery store wig. This is kind of my all day with my husband going out to eat wig. So let's check out the Jackson by Noriko. And this is the Jackson by Noriko and the Champagne are as well. <laughs> Line up our ear tabs, pull it back to the hairline. And there we go, a cute short style just for everyday use. Um, I have to tell you that this wig was very unmanageable when I first got it. Just mm, so frustrating. And uh, I was watching another wig reviewer who was wearing this wig, who, by the way, the wig looked totally different on, totally different on her, but she was right about one thing. Lori Beth is her name. You can look her up. She's got great wig reviews. Um, she, she described the back of this wig as Rod Stewart, and Lori Beth, you're totally right about that. This wig just had this big, huge, horrible permatease bump in the back, but you know what? I did my blow drying routine. I put a lot of a conditioner, wig conditioner, like the spray in kind, on it. Uh, blow dried it, brushed it a lot, wore it for about a week, and now it looks, you know, like a natural head of hair. But I'll tell you, when you first get it, it's gonna look freakishly weird on you. Just not right at all. I also, uh, I think I took my flat iron to this a little bit on the very lowest setting, on like probably a hundred. And I tried to get rid of some of the little flippy 
weirdness that was going on because when you first got this wig it was huge on top and the bottom of the wig just kind of tapered was looking really uh god it was looking really mrs brady i think that was the problem it was like all big here and then just like flippy out here and it's just that's not how i want my wig to look i never really liked the brady bunch but that was just too much I mean, so basically, this is a pretty realistic, nice looking wig. It's not one of those wigs that are like way too dressy that people are like looking at you like, why is she grocery shopping with her hair like that? And it's, uh, yeah, it's just trussed down nicely. You can also do some cute things with this wig. It really lends itself to um, some other looks. So. I could even work out in this wig if I wanted to. Ponytail it. Or, uh, probably don't have the right one. But you can also use a good old butterfly clip. Oh, this is too big. Well, it looks cute when I have a little, I have a little one, but that one's in my purse. So anyways, I kind of get the idea. You can do some cute things with this wig that aren't too ultra dressy. So those are my two Noriko wigs that are my main go-to wigs. And anyways, I hope you check them out. They're great wigs. And I hope you come back to see some of my other wig reviews because I've got a lot of wigs, let me tell you.